you think about the trip? What I'm thinking right now is how much I'm going to miss all this space. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be hard to get used to. Yeah. Spatially challenging, for sure. Yeah. That's Especially if the dog farts and stuff like that and you can't get away. Or you fart. <laughs> Somebody farts. What do you think about the trip, though, really? And what we're trying to do? I mean, I think it's an opportunity of a lifetime, honestly. I, mean, I said to you a year ago, I go, what's the end game here? I felt like, although I'm an out-of-the-box guy, I still felt like I was in another box. Yeah. It started along, one of the things that really started it, ironically, is, I guess it's not even ironically, it's just, I'm, I'm remembering right now when Lily was really struggling with school and she looked up who invented school. <laughs> <laughs> and she was really pissed at that guy, I can't remember his name, but, but, and when we were struggling with her school and she was really, 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 really hurting every day. Yeah. And it was really quite sad. And yet we were trying to do our duty about like, you know, you've got to go to school and it just, I think it built up over time. She did end up switching schools, which is good, but it, and then we saw the film, um, who to invade next or yeah. Michael Moore yeah and <laughs> they showed these different places you know places in the, uh, in the world where they did school totally differently and and they did a lot of things differently and I think that brought up a lot for me yeah in terms of so there was that and then there's the political climate and all the divisiveness and all of the stuff going on where we're so off the page in terms of what we have in common we're Focusing on what, how we're different. Yeah. And that was challenging for me. And I'm 53 years old and I'm clear as I've ever been that I've got a short, a short amount of time on this planet. Yeah. And what am I, what's the end game for all of that? What does it look like to just, you just kind of keep going on and tell yeah. you all of a sudden go, oh, I haven't done what I wanted to do or I, or why didn't we take that opportunity and because you don't, this doesn't, I don't know that this is a rehearsal. I think, I don't know. Well, so this I, life, this whole yeah. life thing, the yeah. rehearsal, no. I don't know about that, that. So I have to err on the side of not knowing and take advantage of this as if this is, you know, this is like this, this filming you're doing, like action, this is it right now. Right. That's it. Yeah. So that's what started this whole thing of feeling a little bit more or a little less fearful about taking risks because this is a risk. It is a risk, right? Because I, I can get so excited. Like, I'm so motivated to do it. And I know you are, and I know the girls are. And then there's this other side of, like, oh, shit, are we, are we, is this really... Right, and if it didn't feel that way, it wouldn't be worth doing. That's the, that's the truth of it. Yeah. If it was like, man, whatever, it's no big deal, then why would you even do it? Because if it didn't feel scary and it didn't feel risky and if it didn't feel uncomfortable on some level, even though we haven't left, yeah, then it wouldn't be worth doing. Yeah. What do you think um, the girls would get out of it? Perspective. Yeah. Great perspective that they wouldn't otherwise get. I mean, we've traveled a lot. Yeah with them and they're lucky about that, but this is different. It's totally different. It's up close and personal in places they'd never be able to go, meeting people they would never meet, experiencing different cultures or tribes right in the United States because we are a tribal nation. We're not the same in every place. We think differently, we have we have different customs, we have where there's necessarily different cultural programming, social programming, there's different ways of looking at the world. Yeah. Within our own country. Well, what do you think, though, about, you know, you and I love this advocacy stuff, and both of us have always been so committed to breaking the stigma for mental illness. How does that look when we bring our kids into that? Like, how do you feel? I know how I feel, but how do you feel about that? Well, I mean, they're going to experience it in their life, either with themselves or with people they know and love when it's in full bloom, friends who have struggled with anxiety and stress and potentially substance use 
disorder, potentially substance abuse, um, certainly eating emotional disorders. eating disorder, emotional illness, mental illness. Um, so this experience will make them that much more powerful when it comes to how to help people. Yeah. And how, and how not, not to be scared of saying, saying something. Yeah. Because it's like we're all so scared of something that is happening and if we just all spoke about it and taught our children how speak to be compassionate to speak about it, talk about then it. Yeah. maybe they could start treating mental illness the same way they treat, say, physical illness, like a broken arm or cancer or something with the same compassion and respect. Well, the brain is an organ. I don't think that's talked about very often. So if, mm-hmm. you're, having, if you're having trouble up here, it's not something like unlike something else that goes awry. It's something that is out of balance and the brain is an organ and it needs to be fixed like other things. And, you know, it should be put more in that context than, than it being something so out of the ordinary and something so weird, something so scary. I mean, it's just, it, it should be much more simple and easy to talk about. And so that will make them that much more able to help people when it, when it happens to them in their life, either to themselves or to others and that they're close to. And right now, I know for sure that there are people that they know who are struggling with something. Yeah. Whether it's attention deficit, whether it's, you know, it's, it's anxiety, it's any number of things that happen because of genetics or epigenetics or whatever's going on. We need to be more responsive and less reactive to those kinds of things so that we can continue over generation lowering this, getting rid of ultimately, hopefully, um, stigma altogether, these things. And teaching our kids how to carry that on to make a difference. Yeah. Saying it's okay. We need to talk about it. And I, and, I, and I trust, maybe more than ever, that this generation growing up right now has a chance to make a difference along those lines. But I think it's important to talk about it now um, more than ever because it's, it's getting worse yeah. in terms of how stressed out our society is, how anxious we are, how disconnected we are from self. You know what's amazing though is like we're setting out to make a difference with our advocacy work but also most importantly uh, teach our girls something and I have a feeling though Tim they're going to teach us a whole lot too. No, oh, yeah, they already have. There's no doubt. No, they've taught me more than I could have ever imagined ever imagined. There's no way you can know how much of an impact they have on your life and your growth and your, the way you see the world. So I have one more question for you. Do you think we could take that chandelier? <laughs> I don't know if we can take that chandelier, but we should have a chandelier on our, on our bus or whatever we're going to take. Perfect. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah.